This is a common way to design a table, but it's not a good one. It's called the Entity Attribute Value Design, and in this video I'll explain what it is, why you should avoid it in your database, and several alternatives to this design. The Entity Attribute Value Design is common because it allows you to be flexible with the data that you store. This is common with product attributes in an online store, or customer attributes in a CRM. Because the attributes can change over time or there can be a lot of attributes to store. It's called an entity attribute value design because it is a single table with three columns. The first column refers to the entity, which is the related record. This could be a customer ID or a product ID, for example. The second column is called attribute, which is the name of the value being stored. This could be colour preference or phone number for a customer, or perhaps size or voltage for a product. The third column is called value, which is the actual value that is stored for the attribute. For example, the value of green or large or 240 volts. Check the link in the description for a guide to this design, all the other options in this video, along with their benefits and drawbacks. However, there are several problems with this design. First, it's hard to enforce data types and constraints. Because the EAV design needs to be flexible, the value column needs to be a text data type. This means it's hard to enforce that numbers are valid and dates are valid, and even text values meet certain criteria that you may want to enforce. You can't add a check constraint to this column or relate it to a lookup table, because it needs to accept almost anything. You also can't relate the entity column to the related table, like customer or product, if it needs to handle multiple types of records. You could have separate instances of these tables for each type of record if you need to, such as one table for products and another for customers, which would allow you to use a foreign key constraint. It's also slow to query. It's not normalised, so it's hard for the database to find an efficient way to look up the data. You may also need to join to the table more than once to get the data you need. So if this EAV design is so bad, surely there's a better way? Yes, there is. There are several alternatives to this design, Let's take a look at them. The first option is to create a design that follows the traditional normalization concepts. This means adding separate columns with the appropriate data types to the relevant tables, and lookup tables if there is a defined list of values. Here's an example based on a product database. Our product table would have the product ID and then a range of columns that represent all of the attributes for a product. Each column would have the appropriate data type. Each row in the table represents a single entity, such as a product. This type of design is best for when the set of attributes is known and stable. For e-commerce stores, I believe they are usually pretty stable. There may be a lot of them, sure, but they are stable. For systems where users can add and change attributes, such as administrators in a CRM, perhaps more flexibility is needed. There are a few benefits to this option. It's easy to query as the data is stored against a single record. You can enforce the data types, which improves the quality of data. It also has better support for indexes and constraints. The drawback to this design is that it is not flexible if the attributes change frequently. It may also feel a bit messy if there are a lot of attributes. Your table may end up having 50 columns, for example, which may not seem ideal, but the database can handle it. Once again, you can get a guide to all of these options at the link in the description. Option 2 can be called vertical partitioning, where you can create a new table for each group of attributes. This option is best for when your attributes can be logically grouped together. Here's an example. For our product table, let's say we can group our attributes into two groups, one for metadata like description and images, and one for physical attributes like size and colour. We would have two separate tables here, with the related columns in each table. We have separated the single wide table into multiple narrower tables. There are a few benefits to this option. It keeps your design normalised, like the first option, which means you can enforce data types and constraints. It's also easier to query than the EAV design. However, the drawbacks are that it's not as flexible if the attributes change a lot. It can also grow complex if the groups are large or if they change often. The third option is using tables for each type of record. In this example, we have a main or a base table for products. This stores any common attributes for each type of record, such as the name. We then have separate tables for each type of record. For this example, we have book products and electronic products. 
These have different attributes and they are in different tables. They have a foreign key back to the main products table and they store attributes related to only that type of record. It's similar to the previous option, but a product would only have data in one of the subtype tables. With the previous option, the product would have data in all of the tables. This type of design is best when you have different types of entities, but you have some shared attributes. I've created a video that goes into this design in more detail, which I'll link in the description. The benefits of this design are that it keeps the data valid for different types of entities. It stores less data as you only need one row in the related subtype table. It also enforces the data types, which improves data quality. The drawbacks of this design is that you'll need to perform an extra join to get the full set of data. This isn't such a bad thing and you'll need to do joins in the other designs too, but it's an extra join compared to option 1. Option 4 is using a JSON column to store your attributes. JSON is quite flexible as long as you adhere to the JSON format when storing your data. To use this option, you have a single product table with an ID and another column with the attributes. This column will store your JSON data. The data type will depend on which vendor you're using, which could be JSON or Blob or JSONB. Recent versions of many vendors have improved JSON support, allowing you to easily query and manipulate JSON data. This type of approach is best for when the attribute structure varies a lot between records, but you still need some validation and indexing. There are a few benefits to this approach. First, it's flexible. The structure can change as you need to, and you can update the data accordingly. There should be better query performance than the EAV design, and it should also be easier to query. There are a couple of drawbacks. It probably does not perform as well compared to normalized tables. This is a generalization and depends on the data you're storing, but generally, normalized tables would be faster to query. It can also lead to poorly structured data if there are no agreements set up on how to store and structure the data within the JSON column. Another option is to use property tables like an EAV design but use specific columns for each data type. This type of design is best if you really need to use a flexible model but you want stronger data types than a traditional EAV design. Here is how it works. You have a single table, like the EAV table, that stores the entity ID and the attribute name. Then, instead of one column for the value, you have several. One would store the value if it is an integer, another would be for text values, and another for dates. You may want another column for time values or boolean values, depending on your requirements. The benefits of this design is that it's slightly better than the normal EAV design, as it includes data types for storing the value. You can add indexes more effectively than the EAV design as well. However, it's still messy and hard to maintain. It's hard to ensure that only one of the values in each column is stored. It also may not perform as well as other designs. Here is a summary of the designs we looked at. Like many things in software, each option is a trade-off between several factors. I recommend avoiding the EAV design and choosing one of the designs here, depending on your requirements. Ideally, the data would be normalized like in option 1, but other options have different benefits with more flexibility. Check the link in the description for a guide to these options. Now that you've learned more about this type of database design and some better options, you'll want to watch this video next to learn a few tips on improving your database design. Thanks for watching.